hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome if you're a current subscriber welcome back my name is jasmine if you are new here um i have two etsy shops uh, my first one is creative jazz designs and the second one is twinkleology um, the main one which is creative jazz designs i've had open for the longest and um i do adult t-shirts mainly on that shop on um, the twinkleology it's more like baby onesies and toddler and youth shirts um so in today's video i will be making some easter onesies and actually one valentine's day t-shirt um so if you guys want to see how i make these easter onesies and valentine's day shirt then please keep watching all right so the first thing i'm gonna do is remove my large platen from the rico ri 1000 which is the dtg printer that i use to print on the shirts and onesies um, this is actually not the platen that comes with the machine when you buy it it actually comes comes with this size which is the medium size platen um i use that i use that platen for like youth t-shirts and up to an adult small um, anything from adult medium to adult 2xl i would use the large but today i'm starting with baby onesies and this is the size platen um, that you need for the baby onesies. This side, don't mind. That is just me printing to get a guide as to where I need to align the image on the onesie. So then what you do is you just put it on right here. You secure it. And I lower it to the lowest setting, which is actually the highest setting. But down here, it's like at a zero. Um, I take my onesie and I put it through here and what I like to do is pull it over so that the little edge of the neckline is over the edge. I also take some masking tape, take a piece. I break it into three pieces and I secure the bottom so it doesn't lift. And then I also do it to the neck so it doesn't lift because if you leave it and it ends up lifting, um, when the printer is printing, it will leave ink on the edge. And that's happened to me a lot of times. So I've learned my lesson and this is how I avoid it. So, now I'm going to load the image from the computer to the machine, and I'll show you now how I do that. So here I'm at my Anarip software. Here um, I'm about to pull over the image that I want to print from my desktop. So once I find my image, I just click on it. There you go. And then I drag it over. I hit no. And then here I'm going to size from the neck down. It's going to be three inches. That's from the top to bottom. Then here I'm going to size the image depending on the size of the onesie. So I usually go about as big as a six. There you go. And then I apply, center it. And then I make sure the white ink is off. Color adjustments are good. And then in my print settings, I also make sure the white is um, selected there. Super fine for quality. RI1000 is the printer. The platen is large and then extra wide. So make sure everything is good. I center it again and then I send it to print. Then I hit no. I hit OK. And it should be good. Okay, so now that I sent the image over, it's already here on the screen. I'm not sure you can see it. 
You can see it right there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press set on my machine so it brings it in. And now it'll start guiding me to lower the platen because it's too high up. So what happens is, if you notice, there is an orange square and it says obstacle detected. It means the machine is too high. The platen is too high, not the machine. The platen is too high. So there's a little gauge in there, if you can see. And what you have to do is you have to keep twisting it till that turns white. Like that. And then you try again. You press return and then you press set again and it's still popping up orange. So you're gonna continue doing this till you try again. And it's still too high. So you'll continue this process until it goes all the way in and it'll tell you when it's ready. Still orange. And now it'll start printing. do the youth shirts it's a youth small I have to change the plat in hopefully it fits on the medium size I think it will but I'm not too sure I have to go back to this one Z platen but we'll see so take this off and my medium plat in whenever I change platens, whenever I change the platen, I like to lower the platen all the way back down to zero. Because every platen, the height is different depending on the shirt. So big um, differences, every shirt, different material, um, the thickness. So yep, and it does fit. So. It is the right size. So what I do, same as one of these, I pull it over the edge. So the neckline is over the edge. I don't tape it because it has this thing right here. And you wanna make sure it's nice and tight and secure, nice and flat. Because the higher the platen can be, the better the print image will look because it'll be closer to it. So then I have it down to zero um, and I'm gonna send the image over. So I'll show you now how I do that. All right, so here I'm again in the Anarib software. I'm dragging over the image, putting no. Here I'm gonna set this to uh, 1.7 plat and I have to change it to medium size of the one of oh, not the onesie the t-shirt is going to be nine wide i'm going to change the height to nine and then see if i could just mess with this a little so i'll put it to eight apply it and center it then i'm going to make sure that it's medium size printer is that super fine i leave the settings all the same white is not selected and color adjustments are fine 
So now I make sure I center again and send it to print. Now I hit no, okay, and now it should be good. All right, so now the image is sent over to the printer and now I'm gonna start setting it for the height. So now it's orange again. And just keep playing with it until the white triangle, not triangle, square appears. So the white square appears. And that's all it took. Now it's all the way in and now it'll start printing. Next shirt is the Valentine's Day one. Um, still with the same platen, the medium size platen. I'm gonna send over the image and show you how I do that, just like I did with the previous shirts. Okay, so here I am again. I'm gonna drag the image again over, hit no. I'm gonna set the height from the neck down to two. Actually, no, I'm gonna change that to 1.7. Then I'm going to change the size of the image. Let's see, I'll do a nine. Well, no, that's too big for height. So I'll do nine height. And then actually 9.5, uncheck this. And then I can change the width to eight, apply it and center it. Um, actually, I'm going to do this a nine wide and then apply it again and center it again. Then I'm going to make sure all these settings are still the same. Medium platen, the printer, the quality is super fine, extra wide. No white ink is selected. Color adjustments are good. Center again. Print. No. Okay. And now it should be good. So now that the image is back at the printer, I will feed the shirt again. Should be left at the same setting because the previous shirt is the same exact shirt and size, so we'll try that. Put this back on it to secure it. Good thing about these things is they have a little circle there, which guides you to make sure you are at the center of the shirt when you pull it. You can see it. All right, once it's set, make sure it's centered nice and flat and I feed it and it's a white tri triangle white square I need to go back to learning my shapes apparently so now it's printing that now once that is done printing, I'm going to take them over to the heat press and I'll show you how I press them after they have been printed. So I'll be back. So here it is printing. And I forgot to mention these shirts are already pre-treated. Um, I mentioned earlier that I do have a video on how I pre-treat my onesies, but I think I will be making another video on how I pre-treat my um, toddler and youth shirts um, so that would probably be a little more in the future um, just so you guys can see it's pretty much the same process as the onesies but it's just they're just bigger um, so the setting on the pre-treat machine will be a little higher because you want to spread the pre-treatment at a wider surface than the onesie one but yeah, I'll make a video on how I do that specifically. But here it is. It's almost done. As you can see, it coming out. Super, super cute. This is actually one of my favorite Valentine's Day designs. Um, and there it is. Super. 
super adorable. All right, so here I'm at my heat press. It's already preheated. I pre-treat my onesies at 320 for 60 seconds. Um, so I actually have to change the seconds. I forgot I had pressed some shirts last and those are just for 30 seconds. So I have to increase my time to 60 seconds. Um, so after they're printed, I put them on the heat press at 320 degrees for 60 seconds again, but it's only one time. Um, when I do the pre-treatment to um, dry the pre-treat, I do it two times, but after the image is applied to the onesie, I only do it one time at 60 seconds. So like I mentioned before in the other video, if you've watched it, um, I try to do two at a time because it cuts down my time. Then having to do one 60 seconds and then another one 60 seconds. So it's just um, it's a little quicker. And then I wait for the 60 seconds to go by. All right. So now they are set and ready to package. Now I'll continue with the next one because this is the last one for 60 seconds. There's only one. And then the rest of them, which is the t-shirts, I do those for 30 seconds. So those are a shorter time, but that's just what's been working for me. Everyone does things differently, but I'm not saying my way is the correct way. You may find a different way that works better for you, um, but this is just what's been working for me. So. Don't take my word for anything as being how it's supposed to be. Um, it's just what I've learned from trial and error. Um, I've had this machine for almost a year and I've made a lot of mistakes in the process of learning. So it's just pretty much um, just trying one different setting if it doesn't work, then trying a different setting. Um, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube um, of people that do their pre-treat totally different. Um, like you've, if you've seen the other video, you see that I have a Viper Mini and that's what I use to pre-treat. Um, a lot of people do it with like a manual, it's like a manual um, sprayer that they get from like Home Depot but I don't trust myself in trying to learn that process. So I ended up, I ended up spending more on something that I know is gonna help me more. And it's easier to use because it's electronic and it guides you at the speed that it will lay at the right pace than just gauging it myself with my arm, not happening. So here is the Easter t-shirt and I am going to press that now. Change the setting on t-shirts. 320 degrees for 30 seconds, not 60 like the onesies. So, to drop this to 30 seconds. And then now I can press. So now it's almost done. Packaging. And now the last shirt, which is the Valentine's Day one. So, pretty much the way I could explain why you have to heat press it again is so that the ink sets onto the material. So, it's like it seals it pretty much. It's the only way I think I understand it. Um, but yeah, that's what's worked for me at the settings that I've been putting it. Um, there was a time where I was actually doing it at a higher heating setting. I think it was 330 degrees. And for some reason I noticed that on my white shirts, I was getting like yellow stains. And sometimes when I looked up, it was saying that either you're laying too much pre-treat on the material or the heat setting could be too high. So, learn my lesson from plenty of mistakes. 
And there it is, super, super cute. Can't wait to mail these out. So now we're gonna go and package these orders. All right. So now I'm gonna package the orders. Um, what I like to do is separate all the stuff I need. Um, what I use to package the orders is, I use these plastic sleeves. This is what I put the onesies and t-shirts in. Um, these are the poly mailers that I use. Um, really, really cute. I actually got them off of Amazon. Um, I think it's like a pack of 100. And I think this pack right here of these is the pack of 200. And then I use these thank you stickers to seal the back. Um, I use some tape, which is what I use to seal it when it's like, if there's space, I like to make it as tight as possible. And um, then I take all my orders and put them in order. Um, this is actually a gift. So this is really what the gifts, re gift receipts look like. But um, this is actually an order that my best friend did and she's mailing it to someone. So I made a custom postcard for them for Valentine's Day and I'll be mailing that instead of the actual receipt. So it looks cuter, but you'll see how I put it together. Um, these are my thank you cards like I've shown before. Um, I will have a video coming out very soon that I'll be filming on how I make these. Um, super inexpensive than having to make them through a website. Um, I'll just show you how I put it together and where I send it and print it. I actually learned how to make those from another girl. She has, I think she makes like boba babies they're called. Her name is Battyful. I'll link her YouTube channel here and the video so you can see how she does it because that's exactly how I made it. Um, but I'll also make a video on how I put mine together if you're interested. And then I take all my mailing labels and I um, separate them. And then I start packaging. So first thing I do is I like to sort them all out. And then I take the onesie that I'm gonna package. I make sure they are buckled up. I fold them and then I fold the little sleeves over. I take one of my plastic sleeves and I insert it like that. And I make sure it's to the edge as much as as much as possible. And I secure it. Take the air out. And then I take two pieces of tape and I fold over whatever excess of the plastic is there and then I tape it down so it looks like that then I look for my order I take the receipt with a thank you card I lay it on top Make sure to see who it's going to so I can pull the label for the shipping label so I know what shipping label I'm attaching to what envelope. So I take it just like that. And then I take one of the poly mailers. I slide in to the edge as well. Secure it. And then if there's excess, I do the same thing. I fold it over and I tape it so that it's secure. Even though 
You don't have to, but I do it that way. So it looks neater. It's just me. I tend to want things perfectly. Which is a bad habit of mine, but... Then I take one of my thank you labels. Put it on the back. I take my shipping label and I put it on the front and it's ready to go. friend ordered um, so I can show you how I put the little postcard in and how it looks um, you don't have to make a postcard if it's a gift item but I tend to like to add it just because it gives it a little cuter feel so I package it like that so I don't have the little postcard hopefully it fits in here like that if not i have to make it a little smaller but hopefully it'll fit once it's in there you can fix it however you want what it looks like super cute and then I do the same thing so I will add this here just so they can tag me on social media I pull the shipping label and then I put it in here Take the actual part to the plastic so it doesn't move around, and then I just seal it like the other ones with the little thank you sticker. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
um, I would love for you guys to comment down below um, any new videos that you may want to request for me to film. Um, and then also, if you have not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to make sure you are notified whenever I post a new video. All right, well, thank you guys for watching so much and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.